Hey, it's Chase from Sorcery Contested Realm, and today we're spotlighting an exciting match from round three of the U.S. livestream celebration broadcast from the Reaper Game Store in Texas. In this match, Erica and Marcus go head-to-head -head in a sealed gameplay match, battling between spell slingers, with commentary by Zalem and our very own Drew Holmes. We hope you enjoy. And we are back from an incredible round three. <laughs> Shout out to the, the sleeves from Erica. One of my favorite players in the local scene. Those dog sleeves are amazing. I'm yeah, I like them. I'm gonna be a little distracted, I'm not gonna lie. The kiss the kissing on each other. Oh, Erica's on uh, air fire. And uh, Marcus is on, what was it, just fire and air as well? Wow. This is interesting. We have even the same cards in both players' hands right now. Wow. Hey, look, the Red Cap Powerys are making a comeback. Oh, I think this is going to be a pretty interesting game. Both players most likely have spells like Arc Lightning and Burning Hands and... All sorts of ways to finish out the game. I would be willing to bet that this game will not last the entire round. <laughs> I'm seeing, I'm seeing charge. I'm seeing burn. <clears throat> There's another. I think that's Reckless Squire up here. We have Hamlet ablaze. This may be a quick match. Oh, there's the harp. What does the harp do? What's the golden harp? Let's take a look. That is oh, that's the. Is that the charge? Let's take a look at the Golden Heart. I wonder if this is the charge artifact? Oh no, this is strike. Strike damage and life loss caused by nearby units is reduced to two. That is really cool. This is the first time we've seen this played today, at least on camera. I think that... I think that Golden Heart. Erica with the Forge. I think Golden Harp could be, like, just, just calling it right now, could be the deciding factor of this game. Really? Do you see, strike damage and life loss... Reduced to two. It's reduced to two. Wow. And this, this, this includes, this includes attacks on sites. Mm -hmm. This includes, this does not include spell damage, though. So Marcus is playing Air Fire. So if he casts Arc Lightning, it would still deal four damage because it's direct damage that's to an important. avatar. That's definitely going to be important. If he targets, you know, the avatar. Right. But wow, this is actually going to be pretty interesting. So Erica, she'll want to play Golden Harp on in the in her back row, like where her avatar is, so it doesn't affect Marcus's sights. Sure. So we see her on turn one play the forge to give her avatar the lance token, and then followed by a spire on 13 with no play on turn two. Let's see if Marcus has his own red cap powerys. Oh, he played a Marcus played a lookout. Wow, look at wow. Erica's hand. She has the thundering she giant. Does. Let's take a look at Thundering Giant. Which is why Eric's Erica's hand is revealed in the lookout? Yeah, lookout, yeah. So Marcus plays lookout, which forces Erica look to reveal her hand. Yeah. And we see that Erica has lava flows, first of all, that's already awesome. Golden Arp and Thundering Giant? <laughs> wow. Six mana for four power with charge. Once on your turn, Thundering Giant may teleport to another nearby location. Tap all other units there on arrival. I am actually very excited to see this card come to play. I have, I actually have not even seen it played in any limited events I've played in. Yet. I haven't either, no. So I, I'm super excited to see this one. I know some people love this, love this card, and so. Erica draws a Viking. She's a banshee in Marcus's hand. Erica is just stacking her hand. Wow. 
Oh, and she's got the well. Okay, so Marcus did play his Reckless Squire with charge to deal uh, one damage to Erica. Erica Does Erica well? just play Golden Harp here or come in with the Pat Powries? Oh, see, Erica knows, just side note about site placement. Yeah. Physically on the board. Thank you, Erica. Well, Erica and Marcus. I think we're going to see these powers come we, out. We do. And, oh, interesting, she chooses to attack. She's getting aggressive. She is. I probably would have taken out the Squire, to be honest. I would have picked up the, well, not picked up the lands. I definitely would have taken out the Squire just to get him off the board, mm -hmm. most likely. But she's all about the, the pain. She's, yeah, she's, she's all about, about the pain. The pain. <laughs> she's, yeah, she's getting after it. And I, I do want to make a little side note here. Both Erica and Marcus here on the future match, they are partners. Oh, they are. They are partners. Ah, yeah. I wanted to leave that. that I wanted to leave that uh, little hmm. bit of a spoiler. Okay, so they're together. They are. But not for this match. Not for this they're match. Enemies. No, clearly no. They're enemies here. So Erica says, "Oh, you play reckless far. I I don't care about reckless far. I'm just going to put pressure on your life total. I'm going to race you, and I'm going to win." Now, Marcus has to respond to Erica's red cap powerries. I really like that play. It's a very, mm -hmm. very strong power play. I'm all about clearing threats on the board, like, as soon as I can. And I, I think that that, I, I still think maybe, like, it would be worth it to go ahead and, like, get one yeah. up on card, yeah. you know, on the board, you know, Agreed. against uh, Marcus. But Erica's doing her thing. Swings are good. Mmm, that's interesting. Uh, that will kill the minion. Yeah, Spellcaster, Spellslinger was holding a lance. Yeah. yeah. So Marcus... Sacrifice Marcus that minion. sacrifices his Reckless Squire to take care of the lance on Erica's avatar. So he kind of rewarded Erica for Erica's play. It did. In a way. All right, so, so we see the, um, this is the hideout, correct? Treetop hideout. When it comes into play, yeah, it's, it gives stealth to a nearby minion. But he had to play that first in order to play the Keening Banshee. Which is why he sacrificed his... Uh, minion into the spell center to cast the banshee for zero, right? So this would have been this could have been an opportunity for him to actually use Keening Banshee's ability, right? On the that, reckless squire. That's what I, yeah, that's what I was. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh, I'm so sorry. I, I cast did not zero. Yes. I was I was thinking of a totally different effect <laughs> where you sacrifice a mortal hey, to play. We're, we're four rounds in. I know, right? It's, and it's I'm okay. opening these packs over yeah. here. There was another card that allowed you to sacrifice a mortal. So, really cool play by Marcus. So, not rewarding Erica at all. In fact, setting up a turn of the tables, as it were, taking over the tempo here. Kinning Banshees can trade with the Red Cap Cowries while leaving the Huntress. Still on board to defend against any uh, further threats coming from Erica's side of the table. And a treetop? Oh, so the, uh, here's a treetop from Erica to give her uh, her power is still. Now Erica can attack the Huntress and Kinning Banshee. Marcus cannot use it to defend because the powers have stealth. That's a pretty strong play. And now we can see the power again of the ordinary sights in Arthurian Legends. Treetop Hideout costing her no mana at all and allowing her to now attack. She is all of that to pay. <laughs> she has is. an opportunity here to kill the hunter. She says, no. Nah. They are driving home separately. <laughs> she says, no, nah, I'm just attacking you all day, every day. Are we going to see the harp? She's reaching for it. Here comes the heart. She's reaching. I cannot believe that she she passed the opportunity to kill the hunters simply to smack him in the face one more time with those powers. 
It looks like the harp's for the hamlets ablaze. For the hamlets ablaze. So Marcus and Tavs, he has his own Hamlet's Ablaze, as well as this uh, the Twister that we saw earlier, I believe. Um, what is the Twister? Do you remember what this Twister card? Everybody knows what this Twister is card does. Whir is it Whirlwind or something like that? Or? Yeah, Whirlwind. Let's look at Whirlwind. Choose clockwise or counterclockwise each unit and artifact the top sites in the 2x2 two two area is pushed one step in that direction. <laughs> oh, I hope we get to see this. I know, that's pretty interesting. I hope we get to see this. All right, Mark is coming in for two. I'm sorry, chat. We had a little bit of hiccup there, but we are so back. And then can we look up banishment? <laughs> Bones, up. yeah, you're right. So Marcus also has a banishment in hand. It gives all allied minions stealth, and then he gets to draw a spell off of that. So he did go ahead and choose to trade his King Banshee for the Red Cat Powerys. Board's looking a little too empty for these for these two. It is. Erica does have card advantage too. See how many cards she has in hand versus Marcus? Let's see if that comes into play. Yeah, she's she's definitely trying to tell Marcus I'm in charge. Right. Oh, absolutely. You can tell. <laughs> <laughs> so we also see a joust in Marcus's hand. Not very useful when you're trying to use when you're trying when all you have is a three power minion and your opponent has a three power minion, because joust causes a fight. It's no different than you just attacking that unit with that minion with your uh, right. three power minion and trading. So, just as best whenever your minion is more powerful than the enemy minion you're targeting. So he's definitely he's he's got a a, a little bit of a stuck hand here. Just isn't going to do much with his um, Sherwood, Sherwood Huntress either, and the whirlwind the whirlwind. I'm not really sure how he's planning on using that one. Hamlet's Ablaze is interesting, especially if it means he could potentially take away some of Erica's air threshold that she might need. And now we have the Vikings coming down for Erica. This is going to be difficult for Marcus. Marcus does not have anything in his hand to deal with the Vikings at the moment. He needs to top deck a minion here. Or Arc Lightning, if he has Arc Lightning in his hand, or in his deck. That would be pretty nice. He could use the Whirlwind to push the Vikings back. So, he chooses to draw a site here. What is he searching for? Oh, another thing that he could do, actually, yes, he could have used his, he's moving his Sherwood Huntress, he could strike the Vikings with his Sherwood Huntress with ranged, and then use Joust to finish off the sure. Vikings, but he would lose oh, here both we go. his Huntress and the Whirlwind Joust. does come into play. So yeah, we're seeing Whirlwind pushing back the Vikings a bit. Oh, that is so good. That is such a strong play. 
So this is why he drew a scythe. Whirlwind. Oh no, actually, he still didn't need a scythe here for this. So I'm really, I'm still confused why he drew a scythe. But Whirlwind costs two mana. Hamlet's Ablaze costs three mana. He pushes the Vikings back in a position where the Vikings can't advance now without getting uh, affected by the Hamlet's Ablaze in the following turn. So very, very cool. Remember, Hamlet's Ablaze at the start of Marcus's next turn will destroy the site that it's on and any minions atop it along with itself. So really, really interesting. Very, very good way to use Whirlwind. But Marcus does go down a card in doing so. Well, the only card he has left is the Joust. So his, he still has a backup plan with the Sherwood Huntress if he needs it to be able to shoot the Vikings and use the Joust to finish it off. <laughs> Once the Vikings now moves over to the Treetop Hideout, except now Treetop Hideout has given Vikings stealth. That's pretty good. Vi Vikings with stealth? Whew. That Vikings is going to get some damage in And the giant comes down. And the down. giant comes down. Oh my goodness. I We've been waiting for this. Giant has We've been waiting for this. Charge for damage. So. And this is why Erica, I think, was getting so aggressive sure. because she had, she probably has a deck full of charge minions. Yeah. And she's just, she's just all about just bringing the pain. Bringing the pain straight to your face. Like she doesn't care what you're doing. Interesting thing about um, the Vikings and the Sherwood Huntress. Vikings does not care that Sherwood no. Huntress has stealth. No. Vikings can tap to deal two damage to everything at that location. Hamlet's Blade is also doing what it's do what it does. Oh my Destroying goodness! Destroying her sight, bringing her down to. Yeah, this is a good game. game. Erica's got a family. Another so, the harp is in her hand. And Hamlet's Blaze, if it had if it had come down just a turn earlier, it would have put Erica off of the Thundering Giant play, so just a turn too late. And now Marcus has to deal with both the Thundering Giant and the Vikings, two four power threats with additional abilities. An attack down here. Here comes the so, Joust. Interesting. So Marcus is attacking for two and then jousting Erica for another two. So now Marcus is bringing the thing. He is. He's like, I'm not going to run away from your Vikings no. every turn while you're pulling your Vikings up closer to my sights. I'm going to get the advantage, get four damage in. And then if you want to, if you want to use your Vikings to take out my Sherwood Hunters and keep your Vikings on the back row, you can do that. That saves me a turn of four damage. Well, and then also he has the ruffians that can come in for an additional three the following turn. So now Marcus is getting aggressive. <laughs> the only thing, I, I, downside for Marcus, I think he's out of cards. I think he just drew he a is. sight. And, and look at how many cards we got right here from Erica. Yeah, and that's always intimidating looking across the, the table and you see someone with four cards again. Well, and this is why I was a little confused. Last turn, Marcus drew a sight for turn. Good point. And I, I was I'm very sure. confused. Like I, I was wondering why he did that. I, does he have a bomb, maybe, mm. that he's just hoping he gets to? Probably. Hey, if he comes back and wins, maybe we can ask him. I will. You will. Hey, we, yeah, <laughs> sure. I'll, I'll tell him you sent me. <laughs> All right, so Erica with a six sight. Replacing the one lost with a spire. The thundering giant is... Look at this hand. Yeah, that's... Hamlet's the Blaze, Blacksmith Family, all the flows, and the heart. Pretty good against the sight in your opponent's hand. Brings Marcus down to three. I'm guessing she's going to save. Erica seems like she knows what she's doing. She Yes, she definitely I'm, does. She's an experienced player. I'm guessing she's, she's going to save those lava, uh, lava flows. Yeah. She was, uh, I think, top, top, eight. top eight from March of the Mortals that you won. Yeah. So you're familiar with Erica's play style I as haven't, well. No, I haven't actually played against oh, okay. Erica. I never got a match against her. 
But I can tell that she knows what she's doing. And I have a feeling she's not going to want to throw away her lava flows because that is the only finisher that she has currently in her hand. Now, Thundering Giant can be a finisher in his own right. So we'll have to see what Marcus does Ooh. here. And he just, let's see what he drew. Oh my goodness. It's not going to do it, unfortunately. It's not going to do it. If that was Arc Lightning, though? Oh yeah. my gosh. Yeah. That would That's be so true. That, that would have been. I, he's, he's digging for some sight. I think that's a desperation at this point. That's, that's what I'm feeling. Marcus is at three line. He needs to be able to block the Thundering Giant. But he can't. We'll just pull up the card that Marcus has in hand. Hello, Waffle Quiz. Erica chooses to block with the Blacksmith family to keep her life total up. Mm -hmm. She does have card advantage over Marcus, so she's totally fine. Sacrificing one of her units. So Thundering Giant, oh no, Thundering Giant, yeah, once in your turn, Thundering Giant may teleport to another nearby location. So because of that ability, even if Marcus had a minion that he could block the giant with this turn, the giant could just teleport to, say, the look at the uh, hideout, the treetop hideout up on two, and still get four damage in. Thunder Giant is really difficult to deal with. You can just teleport away and attack a different location. Hey, look at this. We got a troll. We got a giant. This one is um, Blunder. Blunder, yeah. Blunder boar. You know, good old Blunder boar. Good old Blunder boar. Okay, Blunder boars. Five mana for five power. Allied giants banish the minions they kill to permanently gain plus one power. <laughs> what? Wow. What? I have not read this one yet. Yikes. Allied Giants vanished? What? That is so strong. Marcus is now at death's door, everyone. And this is round four. We do have one more round after this. Erica is just like making full use of her entire seal oh pool. Like, Absolutely. What? Seem, it seems like we're seeing all of her bombs. <laughs> exactly. I wonder what else is in her deck. In her puppy dog deck. Yeah. Don't yeah. worry about my deck. It, it's, it's just a cute, cute it's little cuddly, puppy. Yeah. And it burns you to death. <laughs> wouldn't hurt anybody. <laughs> oh my goodness. Marcus. Marcus should just. What are you going to do? <laughs> what are you going to do this way? <laughs> Let's see it, Marcus. Marcus is hoping that if he reads Thundering Giant long enough, then maybe it'll change and watch it help him. <laughs> <laughs> he is reading that yeah. card He's like, mm -hmm. one a few times. Yeah. Like, uh, can I erase this word airborne and move spell slinger over He's, to two? He's hoping that when he picks up Thundering Giant, maybe yeah. Eric will look away long enough yes. for him to slide a hand and, and throw it under the table. That's a clean approach. He does have his own um, Vikings here. The only problem is Thundering Giant can tap down units at its location as well because it's nearby. I'm not sure if Marcus understands that part. Unfortunately, this is the end. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see if Erica realizes it. And Erica has Lava Flow as well. Oh yeah, Erica has so many, like it's over. <laughs> Don't it's tell over. Marcus. Don't tell Marcus that. I think, yeah, I think you missed the part that Thundering Giant can, that nearby includes the site you're on. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think Marcus would have been in a better spot there instead of drawing that site, just moving over to two to just kind of turtle in the corner because she is playing red. She's already showing red, so obviously things like lava flow. Obviously, she has in her hand, but True. keeps her keeps him safe, right? Yeah. 
lets them rebuild. Burning, burning hands can even burn on hands, yeah, anything. Exactly. Can. So, uh oh, if she moves. Don't, don't. If she moves. Erica, use the thundering giant. No, no, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see the thundering giant. Oh, insane. very good, good match. game. Very good game. Congratulations, Congratulations to Erica. Yeah. She that deck, I, I am yep. scared to see. I'm scared to see what that deck can do. Yeah, that's a, that was a fantastic deck. Sorcerers, we are back from round four of that amazing event. That was an amazing match. Um, yeah, tell us a little bit about it. You That deck is very aggressive, clearly. Like, there's still a lot of games going on right now. Yeah. And most of the games that we've had on the feature match have taken a little bit longer. They've been pretty swingy, not as aggressive. That was a lot different with you. You were pretty yeah. aggressive. Yeah, that's interesting because it's... Probably the fastest game I've maybe played today. Interestingly, yeah. I've had a little more, there's been some times where I've gotten a little more like stalled in my hands um, and being able to actually get that final damage before getting into the death store. But yeah, I mean, in terms of like building that deck and just like what I drew, I had probably the strongest like of the, the fire and the air cards. So, and also I drew like five or six um, fire sites. I drew three poison wells. Yeah. So I was like, I'll play that. Um, so I just decided to lean into those um, since I had like the stronger cards and um, some of those bigger cards. I have like four, I drew four Vikings as well. So oh, I've got like four Vikings yeah. in there. I only had the one that came out this time, but. Um, but you had, and you had card advantage a lot. You had, Marcus was emptying his hand yeah. a lot. And so yeah. I know when I'm playing against somebody and I see that, I'm like, oh, I just feel like I, I lost it. Yeah. And you had so many charge renders. You had the giant outlay. It's like, yeah. it's so difficult to come back from. Mm -hmm. With you're opening your six packs, right? Mm -hmm. You open your first pack. What's the card that you see that you're like, I'm going to build a deck around this? Was there something like that? Did it take you to open all of them? Yeah. Um, it's, it's funny because I feel like my head started going that way when I opened my first actually Poison Well, which oh. is just a simple site. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it was like, a, it was a hollow. And I'm like, sure. that's fun. It does a little damage. Let's see what continues to happen. Yeah. And then from there, like the ball kept rolling with pulling more flame sites and some of, again, those strong, those stronger fire cards. Um, and then with the air, I think seeing the giant was actually the thing where I was like, I've got to push, push doing air as well. So. Yeah, I think those were really the main ones. Awesome. Um, awesome. I yeah. did also draw a hollow Avalon, which I was tempted to play, yeah. but it's a little too nice. So sure. I decided Absolutely. not to play it. That's, that's so funny. Yeah. Um, and so where there's one more round, uh, mm -hmm. what was your record right now? Right now, I'm, what is that? I guess I'm 3-1. So I lost yeah. my first game and then I won the last and game. And I'd say for people that don't know, the chat, you're definitely a fan favorite. A lot of people oh. are rooting for you. Yeah. And it seems like a lot of people know you. Oh, and okay. So, nice. Thanks. Um, yeah. Uh, you, you've been to March of the Morals. You've been to a lot of events. I see you a lot of places. Do you, do you usually build decks that are aggressive like that? Or are you more like a control player? That's a, interesting. So I, so in particular in March of the Mortals, I played Avatar of Air, which is a more aggressive deck. Like if I don't, yeah. if I don't get the damage done at the beginning, people are going to get those really strong things oh, out. Yeah. If I can't boulder them, it's like, oh no. Um, <laughs> so I think right now my builds have been that way. My original build was a sorcerer build that was a little more control. Sure. Um, but yeah, I think for whatever reason, more recent ones have been kind of pushing a little more aggressive. Um, yeah, this is just been fun. That's great. Yeah. Well, I wish you all the luck, mm -hmm. luck in the next game. And it was a pleasure to have you on, and thank you so much. Yes, thank you. Cheers. You can find more gameplay and developer interviews and commentary on our live stream recordings here. And in the meantime, best of luck contesting the realm.